Hello, good morning, everyone. Hello, good morning. I'm Carlos Castillo. I'm one of the general co-chairs this year. Uh, first of all, Benvinguta Barcelona. Bienvenidos a Barcelona. Welcome to Barcelona. I have been a temporary resident in this fantastic city for 10 years. Uh, so it's really, I'm really happy and really honored to be able to welcome you here. Um, so, ah, yes. So I'm the other uh, general co-chair. I'm Mireille Hildebrand. I'm a lawyer in a computer, uh, sorry. I am not a computer scientist, <laughs> but I'm so close to them that I'm beginning to identify as, you know how it is. <laughs> I sort of acquire a fluid identity. Uh, so I'm a philosopher and a lawyer. I have a research chair in my own faculty, so the law faculty, but I also have a chair <coughs> in the science faculty with the computer scientists, which I'm very proud of and happy with, and I'm very honored to be part of this conference and to serve this conference. Speaking about serving, let's say something about the vision that we as general co-chairs of this very young but very booming conference developed for this particular ACM FAT conference in Europe. Um, and you could say that it's core to ACM FAT that it is beyond measure in more uh, meanings of that word than one. I don't know if you saw it, but yesterday there was this circle saying what is fairness? Today, we should have another question, but did we? Oh, okay, when I woke up, uh, the same question was still there. Um, so when you look at a concept like fairness or accountability, and you want to model that uh, concept <clears throat> and make it measurable, then one of the questions this uh, computer science conference raises is, is that at all possible? My answer would be yes, that is possible but it can be done in many different ways. And to decide which um, measurement model is relevant for a particular situation, and also the question whether measurement is relevant and is a good thing in a particular situation, we have to ask that question beyond measurement. Um, sorry, that means, let's first see how the technology operates here, yes. So that means that for this conference, we have three aims. First, we want to continue the excellence in computer science. So this conference should be and is, <clears throat> like all ACM conferences, aim to be a top tier publication venue for computer scientists, especially wherever computational systems impact individuals, groups, and categories of people. The second thing that we wanted to do was to expand what was already core to the FED conference, and that is what we call cross-disciplinary research tracks. So instead of having a lot of different uh, computer science tracks and one track where we heap together everything else, we decided to have one computer science track, one law track, and one SSH track. So that is social science and humanities, why do we do that? Because we think that if you go beyond measurement, you have to take long-standing research from other <coughs> scientific disciplines seriously. It also means that law is not policy. Let's get back to why, why we have a separate law track. Because normally you would say, well, law is part of the humanities, though some people think it's social science. Um, and SSH is not necessarily humanistic analysis. It's not necessarily uh, a normative thing, but it's once again about uh, study into the history, um, uh, social science study philosophy of a lot of the problems that as a computer science, trying to model and measure these concepts uh, you encounter. So it'd be good to learn from that. Another thing that is core, that has been and is core to FAT, is to look into engaging with those who suffer the consequences or the impact of um, uh, the algorithmic decision systems that we are talking about here. Um, and we decided to add to FAT STAR 
experimentation. Experimentation with a format um, inviting what is now called the craft session, critical reflection on accountability, fairness, and transparency. We'll come back to that um, later. All right. So I want to, um, we will be presenting you the people who organized this year's conference. Here are some of their pictures. We will, we will mention them uh, by name, but uh, you, you need to know that it's impossible to pull an event like this one without the help of uh, so many people, and many of them dedicated hundreds of hours of volunteer work uh, to this end. This is not everybody. There is also the executive committee, the steering committee. We're highlighting some people who connected us to them. Uh, there, is, there are program chairs, the diversity and inclusion chair, crafts, tutorial, doctoral consortium, sponsorship, financial support, publicity. There are so many areas uh, in, in this conference that had to be taken care of with a lot of love uh, by, these, um, by these people. So, um, the, um, in particular, for instance, uh, as Mireille mentioned, we wanted to uh, make a big effort to make this uh, uh, interdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary conference. So what we did was to uh, appoint uh, program chairs and track chairs uh, that represent different disciplines. Um, I want to take this opportunity uh, to, for all of us to thank uh, Salvatore, Elisa, Lynette, and Gabriela for putting together this program that we are about to see. Uh, thanks, thanks to you for, for this. <laughs> This is, of course, our proceeding chairs, uh, our track chairs, and, and you, you will be seeing some of them around during this week. <clears throat> some stats uh, about the expansion. About the expansion, um, <clears throat> there were 43% more submissions in computer science, and there were 239% more non-computer science uh, submissions uh, <clears throat> Sorry, we had an acceptance rate of 20, 24%, 24% um, and 55% of the papers were, of the accepted papers were computer science. This is of course very important. The idea is that this is a computer science conference. We want to keep it that way. Um, <clears throat> one small thing about why did we separate out law and social science and humanities. The idea is that law is not just a bag of rules that people have to comply with, but law is there to institute a system of checks and balances to protect people, particularly also to the implications of these algorithmic uh, decision systems. What we don't want <clears throat> is what some people have coined ethics washing. I hope that's a concept that, has, that rings bells with all of you, if not uh, Google it. Yesterday on Twitter, totally disconnected from this conference, was the first time that I saw somebody tweeting about fair washing. So using fair computing to say this is all, all right, we have, we have a stamp. Computer scientists have done fair computing, so it's all right. This is something that this conference does not want. It's not enough. Um, and law is about introducing the law track is preventing the attempt to replace law, enforceable law, with do-goodish niceties like talking about values and saying, well, you know, um, on Sunday afternoon when we have the time, we're going to try and do everything well. But as you know, that won't work because we will be pushed out of the market. So we want to prevent that issue and we introduced uh, law. Right, so let's um, briefly uh, talk about yesterday. I think many of you were around yesterday. Yesterday morning, uh, we had a uh, great uh, doctoral consortium, which is a meeting for PhD students. We got 60 applications, and uh, 40 applications were selected to participate in this meeting in which you can interact as a PhD student with some senior people. Uh, we are very thankful to Giuseppe, Joris, and Sally, uh, also representing the uh, three areas that are represented at the conference, and I would like you to join me in uh, thanking Giuseppe, Joris, and Sally for the work. 
we also had uh, something that is very, uh, I would say, is becoming a, a tradition at FAT. So uh, if you're not familiar with ACM conferences, normally um, the tutorials day had about half of the attendees of the other days. Like it's a, it's a, like, it's a slow day, they have, to, they have less people uh, coming. In FAT start, this is completely different. We got maybe around 90% of the people who registered for the main conference also comes to the tutorial, which speaks to uh, how, how important our tutorial program has become over the years. This year, these are uh, two highlights from two, from two of the tutorials. We had 14, and they were orchestrated and selected and curated by Ruben, Michel, and Nikos Lautaris. <laughs> so our sponsorship chairs raised over $400,000 in donations from uh, different entities, which are, are, are mentioned here. Uh, they are all subject to a strict sponsorship policy, which maintains the independence of the conference. You can consult the sponsorship policy on, on our website. Um, but the, the fact that they were able to raise this money is very important because about two-thirds of the income of this conference comes from corporate support, uh, which means that this allows us to maintain the, the price quite low, especially for for students, for representatives from um, non-profits, and for academics. So this, this, this support makes, it, makes that possible. The, the support was procured by, uh, by, was obtained by our sponsorship chairs who worked tirelessly this year in a very, very difficult job. They, in, they put hundreds of hours on this. Uh, Christian, uh, Christian and Ben Dert, we're very thankful for, for you for what you have done for our okay. community. So we also were able to offer a substantial amount of uh, financial support in terms of travel grants and, and fee waivers. Uh, Jay, maybe you can comment on those. Yes. Um, so we, um, we talked about getting the money in, but let's talk shortly about getting money out, which is usually not a problem. But this conference dedicates, finds it extremely important to enable anybody who wants to come here but wouldn't be able to come here for financial reasons. So we. Um, uh, attributed 132 applications, uh, sorry, we received 132 applications, those are applications for fee waivers or travel support or both. 104 fee waivers were uh, granted and 89 people <coughs> received a travel grant averaging, uh, well, that depends of course on their actual costs. Um, below you see the division and let's already go uh, a slide further, <clears throat> as you can imagine, dividing these monies is also part of our diversity and inclusion policy. We have a diversion and inclusion chair um, who, who was on one of the previous uh, slides, <clears throat> but who is also with us here today, um, Anshka Hanna. Sometimes I'm getting confused with all the names, I'm so sorry. Um, so this is the diversity and inclusion um, uh, policy, or part of it. It's printed on the third page of your uh, little booklet here. It's extremely important for us that we don't only talk about fairness at a very high level of abstraction, but it is part of the way we communicate with each other here and now during the conference. But it's also very important um, talking about how do we enable people from different parts of the world uh, to come into this conference, which, between brackets, uh, as you may all know, the name of this conference is going to change, and the new name will be announced on Thursday. Um, this is completely um, something else, but let's move on. Let's look at the geographical distribution of the attendees comparing uh, last year and this year. So uh, the, the shift is very clear. So there is like a balance now between the United States and Europe, but there is still the whole rest of the, of the world. So there is still a lot to be done <coughs> in terms of, uh, of uh, diversity. The CPDB conference in uh, Brussels that I'm partly organizing uh, has decided to uh, host uh, one of the conferences in Brazil. And I think these things are also uh, part of uh, diversity and inclusion. So, today. Today is uh, mainly devoted to the research track 
first in the morning until uh, 12.15, and then uh, in the afternoon until 6. <clears throat> we will be having panels. People will be speaking eight minutes each, followed by uh, Q&A. <clears throat> Q the interesting thing of the panels is that they will be uh, cross-disciplinary, so people doing excellence from their own discipline around the same topic. So we hope this will raise questions, uh, some interaction between the panelists, and of course with the audience. Um, in the morning at 12.15, we have our first keynote, who I will introduce then, Ayanna Howard. Um, important to mention that during the Q&A, questions can be asked naturally from the audience directly, but you can also ask this via Etherpad. <coughs> so, after the conference in the evening, we have today at 6.30 uh, a reception here at the hotel, and then there will be something very interesting, I hope that you will find it interesting, about uh, a display of Catalan culture. Uh, it starts between 7.30 and 8. You know, you know where you are, you know the country where you are, so... Uh, be patient with this starting time. Um, there are a couple of things after the Catalan uh, culture presentation. We suggest a nightcap near Sands, and there is also an event by Queer in AI, which will take uh, place, like there is an, an open invitation for everyone from, from Queer in AI uh, right after the, the culture presentation. So with that said, uh, we can uh, give the floor to the, to the first uh, speaker, and, and we uh, invite you to enjoy this conference. Thank you.